Hello, this is Patrick Emery from Matrix Science, and in this presentation, we'll be taking a look at some of the improvements and new features we made in Mascot Distiller 2.8, which were released earlier this year. There have been a number of improvements and new features added in Mascot Distiller 2.8. The main area of improvement has been in precursor based quantitation, that's methods such as SILAC, precursor based label free, etc. These will be looked at in more detail in a separate talk. In this presentation, I'll be looking at some new options for peak lists that are exported from Distiller, support for the Brooker Timstoff instrument, a number of improvements we've made in quantitation, and we've made the de novo search feature in Distiller multi threaded. In Mascot Distiller 2.8, you can output a number of new features into any MGF peak lists generated. These include the charge of the individual fragment ions. Mascot Server 2.7 or later can use this information to decharge the MSMS peak list, which is important if you have charge states greater than 2 plus, and which can improve the results for these type of data. If you're processing Timstoff data, you'll want to include the precursor IAM ability in the peak lists. This requires Mascot Server 2.7 or later, and the values can then be used during precursor quantitation to filter the MS1 signal to improve quantitation and you can add custom parameters to the MGF header. These can include search options, such as the options controlling variable modification permutation added in Mascot Server 2.7, or your own custom parameters, which will be passed through to the results.dat file after searching. These can be used for embedding useful metadata into the results. If you want to use any of these settings, go to Tools, Preferences in Mascot Distiller and select the Peat List Format tab. Here you'll find the checkboxes for enabling the output of fragment ion charges and precursor ion mobility values, and also where you can add your own custom values to the MGF header. One of the key new features in Mascot Distiller 2.8 is support for the Brooker Timstoff data format. This is a new instrument data type that you'll find under the Brooker submenu when creating a new project in Distiller. MSMS signals are grouped by precursor ion mobility. This allows us to filter the precursor MS signal to improve accuracy and reliability of quantitation. There'll be more about this later in the presentation. Once the Timstoff data are opened in Distiller, they look very similar to other data types within the UI. The main difference you'll notice is that the precursor I mobility value is shown for the peak lists. Here we have a particularly impressive peptide match from a Timstoff dataset process in Mascot Distiller with an ion score of 325. Mascot Distiller 2.8 can use the precursor ion mobility values for identified peptides as a filter on the precursor scans during the XIC peak detection steps of any precursor based quantitation method such as SILAC or label free. The aim of this is to clean up and improve the quality of the data in the target precursor regions, removing interfering signal, improving accuracy, and giving more reliable quantitation results. For a given peptide match, an ion mobility range is calculated from the identified matches and the precursor ion mobility grouping tolerance defined in the processing options. Only MS1 signals from within the calculated ion mobility range are then used during XIC peak detection. This requires that the data are searched using Mascot Server 2.7 or later and that the precursor ion mobility values are included in the peak lists. Here we can see an unfiltered scan from the precursor region of a peptide. This is a low intensity precursor and, as you can see, there is a lot of noise and interfering signal present. With filtering enabled, the signal in the precursor area is much cleaner, with very little noise and interference, despite this being a low intensity precursor. We took four files representing two replicates from the dataset used in the original PASEF paper for Timstoff. These samples consist of a background of HeLa sample at a ratio of 1 to 1 and a spiked in E. coli protein digest with a reported median protein ratio of approximately 4.3. We then carried out quantitation on these samples with and without precursor ion mobility filtering enabled. As you can see, enabling filtering significantly speeds up quantitation because less data has to be processed. Median peptide fraction and correlation values also improved showing the quality and signal to noise of the data are better with filtering enabled, allowing more peptide ratios to pass the quantitation quality thresholds. The median number of quantitative peptide sequences used to calculate the protein ratios increased from five to six, and more proteins with at least two distinct peptide sequences were quantified. 
the median protein ratios for both human and E. coli proteins are also slightly closer to their expected ratios. Now we'll take a look at some improvements and new features which benefit all supported instrument data formats. We've overhauled the quantitation code in Mascot Distiller and moved it into a new library called MS Quantlib. This has allowed us to tidy up the code, fix some bugs, and use a more recent C++ compiler, which means that precursor-based quantitation is faster. As an example of this, we took a dimethylated light, medium, and heavy labeled dataset from the Pride repository. This is a spiked-in dataset where medium over light has an expected ratio of 2 and heavy over light has an expected ratio of 4. We processed the raw files in Distiller, searched using Mascot, and then carried out quantitation using Distiller 2.7.1 and 2.8.1 on the same hardware. The dataset contains approximately 17,000 quantifiable peptides. As you can see, the median peptide ratios for medium over light and heavy over light are similar from both versions of the software, although results are slightly better with Distiller 2.8. More significantly, Distiller 2.8 was approximately 20% faster, taking 36 minutes less time to complete. We've implemented a novel global time alignment algorithm for the replicate label-free quantitation method in Mascot Distiller 2.8. To understand why we've done this, first let's take a look at how replicate quantitation was handled in Mascot Distiller 2.7 and earlier. To carry out replicate label-free quantitation in Distiller 2.7 or earlier, you had to create a multi-file project with all the files processed together. That's without the memory efficient checkbox checked. This could result in a very large project, depending on the number of samples in the experiment, which could require a very large amount of memory on the workstation to be able to handle it. During quantitation, if a peptide identified in one or more of the raw sample files is missing from another raw file, Distiller simply searches for an XIC peak in that other file, starting from the identified retention times from the other files, up to a user-definable limit, which is 500 seconds by default. In Mascot Distiller 2.8, the raw sample files can be processed individually and a memory efficient multi file project created, which reduces the memory overhead. When it carries out replicate quantitation, the first step is then to carry out global time alignment between the files. This is then used to locate the regions to look for XICs for any identified peptides missing from a particular file. Briefly, the approach used is as follows First, a consensus dataset is created which is an estimation of features that all projects have in common. The individual datasets are then roughly aligned to the consensus. And finally, a more accurate alignment between each individual raw sample file and the consensus is then calculated. There is a separate presentation looking in more detail at this, but to show the effect of the alignment, here we have MS1 features from two files in a label-free project plotted with retention time on the x-axis and M over Z on the y-axis. Before alignment, we can see a clear shift in feature retention times between the two files. After alignment, the common features between the two files are now clearly overlapping. Note that this plot was created outside of Distiller for illustration and is not currently available as a report. In Mascot Distiller 2.7 and earlier, reporting of quantitation results was handled using XSLT transformation of the XML export of the quantitation results. XSLT is a powerful language, but it's not commonly used, and you'd probably struggle to find someone in the lab who was familiar enough with it to write custom reports. In Mascot Distiller 2.8, reports are written in Python 3.6 and use MSParser to access the search and quantitation results. Python is a commonly used powerful programming language, and using MSParser provides simple access to the search and quantitation results. We've taken the opportunity to add some new reports to Distiller, so you'll now find options to generate ANOVA, BoxPlot, various clustering reports including PCA, and a volcano plot. Here's an example of the volcano plot report for one ratio of a label-free dataset. We've exported using the interactive JavaScript option so that hovering over a point on the graph displays the associated protein accession. This information is also presented in a set of tables below the graph. There are some new features available on the protein and peptide quantitation tables. Tables are now sortable either by clicking on the column header or from the column context menu. 
and they are also searchable and filterable. Here I've enabled the table search panel and search for tubulin on the protein quantitation results table. The table has been filtered so that only the matching protein rows are displayed with the matching text highlighted in yellow. And finally, we've made the de novo search feature in Distilla multi-threaded. The de novo algorithm itself is single-threaded, that is a single thread is used to process a peak list. In Distiller 2.7.1 and earlier, if you requested de novo on a range of peak lists, de novo was carried out across those peak lists serially in a single thread, regardless of how many CPU cores you had available on the workstation. In Distiller 2.8, de novo is now carried out in parallel using all available threads. This can significantly improve performance if you're carrying out de novo on a large number of peak lists. As an example of this, here we have the timings for carrying out de novo on 4,268 peak lists from a dataset using one, two, four, or eight threads to carry out de novo on a system with eight real cores available. As you can see, each time we double the number of threads, we almost, but not quite, halve the processing time. Thank you for your attention.